Hey everyone, this is part 6 of the Rooted Access Campus Design. If you look down at the description, there should be a link to the packet tracer from the previous file. Now, if you look at the last video, we had to make some modifications just purely because of packet tracer's limitations. It's very, very buggy when it comes to OSPF in certain areas. So to get around that, we've had to modify and change this area to area 0. And I've also, on my own accord, I've added area 30 in here to allow for summarization, which is what we're going to concentrate on in this video. We're going to summarize from the distribution layer up to the core, up to the core, up to the core. And we're going to configure NAT on here and here. And we're going to test what we've got internet connectivity from within here and then we're also going to finally just see if we can get that IP address from the address post which we configured over on the DHCP server here now the OSPF is there we should be able to relay that DHCP request no bother so without further ado let's kick on and do it then so if we go into area 10 ABR now if you remember the actual design of the the actual design of the IP address and was configured such that things were summarizable within slash 16. So if you look at this, we've got 10, 10, and it's 10.0, 20.0, 30.0, but it's all 10, 10. So we can summarize this entire block with 10.10.0.0 slash .0 .0 16. The same is true of here, 10.20.10.0.10.20.30.0. So this can all be summarized by 10.20.0.0 slash 16 and over here 10.30.0.0.16 slash so that's the way we're going to summarize it up to the core do on that test our pings and then do our dhcp and that should be the end of the demonstration like i say this is not a comprehensive video there's lots more you can do and by all means i encourage you to do so so let's go and do that then we'll do router ospf1 and what we need to do is just specify the area and the range which you want to effectively advertise out so we're going to do area 10 we're working with and it's range and we're doing 10.10.0.0 .10 and we're making a slash 16 we want to point out up so make that 0, 00 and do the same thing on the other ABR which is going to be enable router OSPF1 a little bit more visible I'm going to do area 10 range 10.10.0.0 10, 0, 0, slash 16 so that should be now summarized and let's follow the same principle here except we're doing area 20 and 10.20 rather than 10.10 .10. so we're going to do router ospf1 and we're going to do area 20 this time range 10.20.0.0 and again still a slash 16 and let's move over to the adjacent abr here put the same commands in do enable router ospf1 and we're going to do area oh, area 20 range 10 20 0, 0, slash 16 okay now if we go over here that's over the last one we're summarizing and we're going to do a uh, router ospf1 area 30 this time range 10 30 0, 0, slash 16 and router ospf1 area 30 range 10 30 0, 0, slash 16 so now they should be summarized let's just fast forward this a little bit just because packet tracer can be a little bit slow with this and if we have a look here down at the access layer we should see no difference because we should only see our internal OSPF and our default routes so this should be the exact same which it is that's good that's what we want to see but over here we should see some difference we should see there's some slash 16s in it or thing there so you see our slash 16 there got some slash 16s on the go and up here that's our summarization that's what we're wanting and we've got equal cost path to them so that's exactly what we want. Let's go over here and see that the same is true for the other ones. So show IP root. We should see our slash 16s. Yep. Slash 16 equal cost paths. So that's good. That's what we're after. We want to see that. So now we've done our summarization. What I'm going to do is go over to the edge and configure NAT. So let's do that as well. So we'll just put a basic access list and we'll do access list 
five, I'm not going to permit any. So anything on the inside is going to be natted out. You can be more specific if you want, you probably should be, but for the purposes of the video, I'm just going to keep it simple. So IP nat inside source list access list five, and we're going to nat it to interface. What is the exit on that? I think that's yeah, gig zero 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 interface gig zero 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 and we're using port address translation so we're going to overload it go into interface gig zero 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 to ip nat out and then int uh, range gig zero zero to one for the inside ones to ip nat in same again is going to happen here just do a show ip root connected yeah, so we're going to exit out of this interface here. So we're going to nat to gig at 0, 010 0 this time. So we're going to do access list, just call it 5 again for the sake of it. And we're going to do IP nat inside source list. We're going to use access list 5. And we're going to use interface gig 0, 010. We're 0. going to use port address translation, so we'll overload it. And we're going to, uh, we're going to int gig 0, 010. 0. I'm going to do IP nat out and int range gig 0, 0 to 1 and do our IP nat in. That should be our nat configured. So let's see if we can ping over to Google first. Just from the routers first. There we go. Try that again. It's a bit smoother now. And let's see if we can ping out to the internet from here. Okay, so we have access, so let's test this nat out. We'll ping from inside the network, so we'll just do it from here. And ping, oh. that's good. And try down here. And we can ping fine. Let's try down here, but we've only got our default routes. And we'll do a ping. Yep, full access. And if we go over to our devices and do our show IP NAT translations, we should see our NAT translations there, which is fine. All getting NATed to the 201.0.0.1. So that's that. We can ping the internet. We now have connectivity. We've got our summarization on the go, slash 16s, and our default routes down here, all tightly constricted. We've got our HSRP configured here, and we're load balancing between two different VLANs using PVSD+. Plus. The last thing which we want to check is check that we can get that IP address. Remember, we had those DHCP pools. So we go to services and DHCP. We've got all these pools here. So let's see if we can get an address for each of these. Um, are these in the actual VLANs now? Let's just check that. Show VLAN. Yep, so FAO3 is in VLAN 10. So we should get one from the 10. So if we go in here and do uh, IP config. So we've got our address there, that's good. Go in here. Don't have one there, so we'll just renew that. And now we've got an address there, that's good. See if we can ping the internet. And we can. And we'll go over here and check that it works here. IP config, IP config, renew. And that's us got our address to try to ping the internet. And that's that. So that's pretty much the end of the video. And um, like I said, this is basically an introduction to a rooted access design. Like I said, there were some issues with Packet Tracer. Again, I restate, if you've got GNS3, you won't have such issues. You won't need to stop and restart and save and open and change things to area zero and all this random manipulation just trying to get things to clump together and work it should work smoothly but we got there in the end uh, like i say i really do encourage you to google cisco validated designs rooted access campus design you'll see an actual a full list which will give you all the best practices some of which which have been followed in here and much much more so if you're interested do it because like i say this is the most optimal design you can get in a campus environment if you can uh, spare a wide span and L2 adjacencies. If you don't need those wide span and L2 adjacencies, this is the way to do it because you're going to have much more stability, much more easier troubleshooting, faster convergence, faster failover, all that. 
So that's the end of the video. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Bye bye.